I'm Alessandra Barrett, Special Projects Editor for the Journal of Commerce. I'm at our 14th Annual TPM Conference in Long Beach, California, and I'm joined by Jim Hertwig, President and CEO of Florida East Coast Railway. Thanks for speaking with me this morning, Jim. Well, it's my pleasure, and I always enjoy coming to this conference. It's very informative, a lot of good information. How has Florida East Coast Rail positioned itself to respond to the traffic that will increase when the Panama Canal expansion is complete? Well, Ali, there's three things that we're doing in South Florida, and they involve Port Miami, Port Everglades, and the South Florida Logistics Center. I'll start with Port Miami. Over the last several years, the port has received over a billion dollars in funding for three critical projects, that being restoration of the on-dock rail, building of a tunnel, and getting 50 foot of water depth to handle the big ships. So let's start with the on-dock rail. The on-dock rail was part of a uh, Tiger grant that represented 45 to 50 million dollars, of which the federal government put in 23 million dollars, the state of Florida put in nine, Florida East Coast Railway put in nine, and Miami-Dade County put over five million dollars into the project. What this does is it allows us to load the containers right off the ship onto our railroad there at the port and move the cargo up into all of Florida and the southeast. And uh, this is good because we can provide overnight service into all the entire state of Florida, two-day service into Atlanta, and two-day service into Charlotte. We began that project in 2012. I'm happy to report we completed that project in October of 2013 and on today hauling containers off the port right directly onto our railroad. The other project is the building of a tunnel. Today, all the cars and all the trucks that go to the port have to go down through the congested Miami streets to get onto the port. The port uh, will finish the tunnel in May of this year, which will allow the cars and trucks to come down I-95, get onto I-395, and go right into the tunnel and come up on the port taking all the congested traffic out of downtown Miami and from a container standpoint, allowing the truckers to more expeditiously make local deliveries. The other project, the 50-foot dredge, Miami needed only $77 million to get 50 foot of water and they had asked the federal government to do that. Governor Scott, when he took office, took $77 million out of the state's transportation budget to give to Miami so that they could get the 50 foot of water. That project has already begun and will be completed at the time of the Panama Canal expansion. Up the road in Port Everglades, uh, we currently have a very small congested facility. We handle about 100,000 lifts on just 12 acres of land. But to grow with the port, uh, we worked with the state and Broward County in a public-private partnership wherein Broward County put in $20 million, the state of Florida put in 18, and the Florida East Coast Railway put in $35 million to build a 43-acre terminal facility that will allow us to handle from 100,000 lifts up to 400,000 lifts. Now this terminal is gonna be rather unique because not only will it handle the international cargoes because it's near the port, and it'll come, that cargo will come through a back gate to the facility, but in the front gate, domestic cargo uh, will come in or go out. So we can build direct trains mixing both domestic and international cargo right there at that one facility. In addition, the port is going to double the amount of berths, and that project will be done in 2016. And similar to Miami, they are going to have 50 foot of water in 2017. Third project is the South Florida Logistics Center. That's a facility that is directly adjacent to our Hylia Rail Terminal. It consists of nearly 200 acres and Flagler Global Logistics is going to build 1.5 million square foot of warehouse. Now the unique part about that is it's also right near the airport. So this truly can be a very big intermodal facility. Cargo's coming off of ships, coming over to the facility to go through the warehousing and distribution center, or planes that come in. Uh, Miami's one of the largest cargo airports in the world. 
And so cargo could come in and also go into that facility. To get into the facility, you don't even go out on public highways. It's right there adjacent to our railroad and uh, we take the containers directly in there and many of the times they will be transloads because today for every four containers that go south on our railroad, only one goes back with a load. So I really see that because of the Asian imports and that we import more than we export, there will be a lot of opportunity for transloading. You can take three of the 40-foot marine containers and transload them into two 53s. So we have the 53-footers just waiting to get a load there. So not only can we provide uh, great service into the entire state of Florida and into the southeast and the rest of the country with re our relationships with the Class 1 railroads uh, and moving that up our railroad uh, for final delivery. And we think this will be a big opportunity for the ocean carriers in the future. What does this mean in terms of volume? Well, I don't want to give away a bunch of uh, trade secrets here, but what I can tell you, Ali, is for one, just one 10,000-foot TEU vessel, that's the big ones that are going to come through the canal, that increases our volumes by 18%. Thanks again for taking time away from the conference to speak with me today. Thank you, Ali. I've been speaking with Jim Hertwig, President and CEO of Florida East Coast Railway.